tycoon Alan Bond's entry into the British aviation industry burst into Australian skies today, a multi-million dollar investment and Australia's first airship. The Bond Corporation is the major shareholder of the London-based airship industries, a world leader in lighter-than-air technology. But Marie Mills reports it's that technology firmly entrenched now on Australian soil. It's the massive baby born of the Bond Corporation's $20 million investment in its Skyship's operation. Given a champagne-style welcome in Sydney today by the international experts who put it together and the Perth businessman who masterminded the introduction of Australia's first Skyship. Informality is the keynote for today because it's not the official launch of the ship, although you have seen history made here this morning. The six million dollar helium filled giant is taking off for a series of rigorous test and approval flights. But this piece of aviation history won't be officially launched until Alan Bond is back from London later this month. Today it was an excited Eileen Bond who watched the mammoth ship dominate Sydney skies. It's destined to dominate major sporting and commercial events like the America's Cup, even the next Olympics, as a huge advertising medium giant television screens planned for each side. But the airship will also be used as an eye in the sky for better television coverage of major events, coastal surveillance, scientific survey, even passenger flights, a luxury floating vessel giving tourists a bird's eye view. While Swan Airships is keeping its feet firmly on the ground with plans to extend the airship technology, for this Skyship 600 it was heady stuff today, way up in the clouds, the sky the limit. Marie Mills, Channel 9 News. It was billed as a trip of a lifetime, and that's exactly what it was. More than 2,000 kilometres, including a historic crossing of another ball from Adelaide to Kalgoorlie. The majestic floating airship racing the skies over some of the most remote parts of Australia. Kimber, Nundru, Eucla, Kaiguna, Norseman, and then north to Kalgoorlie. The Swan Airship 600 is one of two models produced by Airship Industries in the United Kingdom. She is jointly owned by Bond Corporation Transport Industries. The airship is 59 metres in length and stands 20 metres in height. Built with helium, a fireproof light of an air gas, the ship carries eight passengers and two pilots. Powered by twin Porsche turbo engines mounted at the rear of the cabin, the polyester blink is probably the safest way to fly. As a passenger on the airship, it's terrific. You've got all the comforts of home, all you can drink and, of course, all you can eat. We're at a height of around 1,500 feet, and if there is any problem with this great aircraft is the fact that it only travels at a speed of around 80 kilometres an hour. But it does give you a great chance to have a look at the great scenery across the Nullarbor. On the voyage, we set out each day at 8.30 a.m. It takes about an hour to make all the necessary checks before the ship takes off, and a similar procedure is used when she lands, usually just before dusk. Once the ship was in flight, she would stay in the air for up to 10 hours, making no stops until the end of the day or when the ship had reached the next destination, which on most occasions took about eight hours. And this is where the crew comes into the picture, a team of 21, five pilots, two engineers and 14 hand-picked ground crew officers. It's their responsibility to get the airship mobile each day. We have four we'll go down and grab hold of the bumper underneath the actual envelope of the airship and we have three side also that will trap onto the two ropes we form out the V section that allows the pilot of the airship to see which way the wind is actually blowing and um, we just go in and grab the ropes before we hold steady until they can do a way off and actually put on the mast and uh, no matter where we went, people came from miles around to catch a glimpse of the six million dollar airship. Towns like Nundru, which have a population of 50 or so, had a turnout of 3,000. Whether in the air or on the ground attached to the mast truck, the Swan airship pleased all who came to see her. An amazing factor about the Skyship 600, wherever the ship goes, so does the ground crew. It is lost without the ground team to the mast truck. It can't operate full stop. The Skyship is in constant radio contact with the mobile ground crew. Mobile late to airship, what are conditions like up there today? For a pilot, it's a 
a new challenge, a new experience, flying something different, something new on the Australian market. But if the Skyship takes off and is well received, the gamble will have paid off for the five aviators and crew members. The skills we tried to fly, and also uh, quite the skills we tried to fly, and fix we need to after all the reasons we don't have any helicopter. Uh, and also was much more affected by wind, wind shear, wind gusts and turns. And uh, just the actual flying characteristics of the uh, uh, completely different the fact that it was fixed wind. The crossing along the air highway past the cliffs of the Great Australian Fight on the southernmost edge of the Nullarbor Plain was no easy task. Months of preparation went into it. Out apart from a minor delay in Norseman, when our mast truck nearly came to grief, as it rested for a few hours of off the axles, the historic crossing was a huge success. 21 men who until a few weeks before we set out, never met before, did what many considered to be impossible. Now in Perth, the airship will be used as a camera platform for the America's Cup, and then comes a long haul back to Sydney, where the airship will be based. And a flyer that's pretty similar to a car, although it's a bit tougher. When you turn it like so, it's not too long before we bank around to the right, a little bit to the left, and straighten it up. I'm doing a pretty good job on this, aren't I? <laughs> 